we could open with uh, the four characters um, perched at uh, the The detention center. No, I'm, no I'm, I'm amused because it wouldn't actually be at the detention center out there in the boondocks of, you know, western Texas. And therefore, the main thing that they would probably be perched on would be some sort of billboard. You know, yeah, yeah, and so, yeah. um, so actually, I'm going to do it a little bit. It'll be a truck stop. It'll be a, a, yeah, it'll be a truck stop. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the outbuildings behind the truck stop that aren't very well lit, that are actually gotcha. up on up on a craggy hill, you know, um, it's one of those truck stops where you pull off the highway and you go up the hill a little ways, and then there's a flat spot with like the restaurant and everything there, mm -hmm. and then yeah, curves back down around to get back onto the onto the freeway, and so there's there's several uh, broken hills in that area. Um, and then there are some outbuildings, as I say, this which is, are not really like for the public to go walking in. And so it's is, an extremely, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, this is probably going to look a lot more like the Texas in the movies than San this part. Itself. Yeah, this part does. The architecture itself is kind of like, you know, industrial yeah, utility. Barns, silos. Yeah, yeah so it's kind yeah. of a, yeah, yeah so it's, it's kind of a ghost. Acting for ICE uh, is overseeing a an operation against St. Mary's and the Oblate School and related activist communities that have been very effectively helping um, undocumented aliens, um, undocumented visitors arrivals um and very much challenging the criminalization from the legal standpoint and very much challenging the treatment from a different legal standpoint and also running as you know uh some very very practical escape and deflection routes for people who are grappling with these issues right now what what you may not have realized was just how effective you were being how effective that network had become uh, that Michael had already been involved in, even while you were still figuring out how to become the Oblate. Um, so this is this is the the main thing is how effective you guys were being. So um, decapitating the command centers was a big priority. Father Ochoa being one, Dean Wayland being another. In our attention to these matters, says Myrmidon, uh, it became the, the we, we began to become more and more aware of the developing lexicon project. We had no idea that it had reached this degree of success to date, gesturing toward you. Um, and uh, that's been uh, quite a quite a revelation to us, if you'll forgive the expression. And so the, to oppose this kind of operation directly with the visible force of Myrmidon uh, would be bad, it would be bad messaging. So things have gotten worse now that Ghost has been involved. The ruthlessness of using Ghost and American operations is startling and can only be interpreted in light of Attorney General Sessions and the recent and drastic uh, alterations of the American government's position on human rights and um, the apparent open war on immigration conducted by ICE and so only only in this context could something like ghost be even considered as you know something to do which leads to the point can you were as you described facility with messaging walk that back by changing the narrative 
Well, that's part of it. Um, part of the issue is that uh, they have, we know that they have detained Wayland here, Dean. John? Is he John? Can I? Yeah, John. Yeah. Um, oh, well, that's, t uh, Myrmidon's asking that, you know, kind of, you know, looking at you. Um, so she she's trying to sort of humanize her dialogue is what she's trying to do. Right, right, right. Gotcha. Um, and so right. she's, uh, well, John, she, yes. she you, you should know that the Myrmidon armor is not a friendly look. Yeah, I, you're right. It's you, you uh, made it's, that clear. Yeah, she seems to be trying to connect to you a little bit in talking, and so the the point is, why on earth would he be at this detainment center? And the answer is fairly easy: people die here, and without any kind. I mean, imagine if you're in one of these centers, and you're insisting that you're someone that they say you're not. Who's going to listen to you? And furthermore, people die there. If he somehow happens to die, heart attacks, she says coldly, seem to be common. See. So it, uh, it seems like a fairly straightforward attempt to silence him uh, in the midst of this, in a way that probably could never be documented or traced. Not to mention, she says... Although this seems strange in the context of the cruelty to everybody there, but it seems needlessly cruel, which also is a hallmark of ghost activity. Now, our biggest concern, however, uh, and why I am surprised and pleased that we're a little bit overpowered for this, You're right about that. Is, that. is that ghost's intelligence is not, by any means, rudimentary. And their recent encounter with, I can only surmise, you at the Oblate School. That's right. Could only have made them more and more and more interested. Michael, you do not want them investigating i mean if i if ice was this close to uncovering the lexicon project i mean we brushed up against it when we were investigating their investigation if if ice is this close to uncovering the lexicon project then ghost is not going to be far behind and you might as well know she says turning to crawl that San Antonio, it's a good thing you're not here because San Antonio is crawling when she kind of stops herself. Pardon me. Amy Biota is leaving no stone unturned mm -hmm. to try to locate you. Something really big just seems to have happened at their own facility. Where there may be, you may, you probably know this, but there may be some indication of the old Man of War project research of that sort, unknown Weird. to us, underway. <laughs> We've seen something along those lines. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, uh, all of you suddenly look extremely innocent. <laughs> Three identical looks of pure innocence cross your face. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Finn goes, oh, that's terrible. Mm. Right. She also uh, turns to Silverbeak, and mm -hmm. before she starts to, 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 actually, she'll start to talk and, and say, may I call you Bri? And then her voice cuts out. And she, like, tries to talk without having inhaled properly, catches her breath, and then very sternly says, uh, be advised that your presence here is under no legal, uh, is, is not legally recognized by Myrmidon Incorporated, and uh, your uh, activities uh, 
will be fully reported and prosecuted under the weight of the law. Yes, but I'm not planning on on going as Silverbeak uh, Myrmidon. So why 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 report anything? Explain. Oh, I I think I may have a fashion myself a new identity. Uh, ideal, I think, for this. Uh, Why don't you purpose. describe this to Ross as you uh, make your costume <laughs> change? Mm. Oh, yes, because yeah, Ross has right. kind of... He just has to twirl twice. That's okay. well. That's yeah. the, well, but I do want the description to Ross because I've. Uh, yeah, well, actually, what yeah. I'm going to do in in the fiction is like quickly like fly up and then fly down, changed. You know, so he's uh -huh. going. He's <laughs> with books, panel so boarders are there for a reason. <laughs> Yes, of course. How are you, Ross? Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, it looks like this. So um, S uh, Brian doesn't want to to be uh, to do this at Silverbeak because he doesn't want to get, be recognized. So basically, what he does is take his costume out and put it on in a very different way. So he discards the the mask, which is too obvious with the beak. And he puts on the the shirt, you know, the the mm -hmm. police the policeman shirt. Okay. He puts it on around his head in a way that like the fabric is pressed against him uh, against his head, and and he's got uh, the buttons lining up like this, tuck, 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 all the way. Okay. Uh, to to like all the way to here, and to have it um, like to so it doesn't go. Right, uh, fly off. Uh, mm -hmm. He he's secured it to his uh, neck with his uh, belt, his uh, policeman's belt. Okay. He's bare chested. He's wearing um, his um, boot clothes. Uh, can be repurposed as hand clothes. So he, he's got like two hand clothes mm -hmm. uh, here. Like they look like a bit uh, a bit robotic, oh, but yeah. still a bit yeah. bird like. Mm -hmm has no shoes yeah, okay. no pants and it turns out uh, we we find out right now that the orange poncho is blue on the inside on the inside because of the university's color so he flipped it around and um, somehow put it around his legs as a kind of skirt you know mm -hmm. yeah. or if you want a tartan since he's yeah, Scottish, yeah, but it, it basically looks so he he comes back down looking like like half a Scottish silly, gimp. Half creepy, you know? <laughs> well, 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 Father uh, Speak. <laughs> yes, and uh, he says. Uh, oh, well, I kind of like it. You're right. The... Uh, oh, and he tries to lower his voice, like to sound a bit uh -huh. more scary. Mid blue skirt. Uh, Mermidon <laughs> says Username pending committee review. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. So our first consideration is locating Dr. Wayland. Mm -hmm. I think we have a variety of ways to do that. Mm -hmm. um, we, the second concern, extraction. Um, it is going to be, the, this is not technically a black site. It is known as a detainment camp. What is not known is the extent of the people here, nor the fate of most of them. Contrary to uh, popular perception, uh, quite a number of the people taken to these camps after being separated from their families and completely uh, dispersed, their social networks broken up. This is a very, very specific plan on ICE's part is to completely destroy the social networking and identity of the people in question and then actually keep them in this country for designated periods of employment. And then uh, using them in negotiation with the Mexican government. So the uh, the important point here being that this is in many ways a slave labor camp, or at least 
and she pauses for a second and her voice drops. A, a holding pen. What I would think we would need to do is sort of share information about what our actual capabilities are, what her capabilities are, and what she knows about ghosts in terms yeah. of how how much of their character she, she's familiar with, basically. There are three active in the area. Yeah. Uh, they are Scorpion, Brimstone, and Torment. Um, Which one is my boss? Brimstone. Is Brimstone. Did, does she indicate any... Does she have any knowledge of uh, their powers beyond what we've already experienced? Or? Um... Not really, because most of what they've done has been uh, sort of... They're, they're very good at uh, okay, leaving yeah. behind blanks. You remember the attacks on your mind when they when they flashed you, when they, they did the blinding attack? Oh, right. Right? Yeah, okay. Um, and so you, she says, we have a curiously difficult time getting specifics on the encounters, gotcha. uh, at least from a witness standpoint. You might actually even be able to say, yeah, they can do something to your mind. They can... They can, if not shut down, they can at least blur the memories of right, people right, they're right. encountering. Um, the uh, she will say one thing we do know is that the the ghost power that they all share appears to be a team power. We speculate that it can only be used uh, in each other's proximity. Oh, that includes the going in substantial. Correct. The, the ghostliness okay. part. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That could be useful. And uh, so, yes, they, they have uh, they, a considerable range of destructive effect. Um, they uh, are associated with absolutely targeted murder. And also, uh, and rendition, of course. And, and in particular, um, leaving behind... Uh, an effect, a, a a terror of what just happened, and a lack of uh, a confusion about what just happened, and just enough imagery of what just happened to chill the social environment in which whatever they didn't want to happen is happening. So yes. they they have a pacification effect on a community that is uh, extraordinarily effective. All right. Um, so that's is the flying. Part of their ghost team power. That seems that our research, indi our observations indicate as much. We are Absolutely. unaware of what each one is capable of at an individual level. All right. Okay. Well, so Brimstone basically shoots a blast of fire that does physical damage and has a telepathy effect that he uses right. to get secrets out of people's minds. That's that's his basic deal. But you don't you don't seem to know as much about Scorpion, guys. He kicks things hard. Yes. <laughs> he thinks he's tough, maybe, yeah. He hasn't proved it yet. Alright. He's the tough one. Perfect. All Probably right. ar armored as well, I assume. What uh what Myrmidon says is what we corporate recommendation, which she says as a, as a proper noun, so there's no the <laughs> Right. Corporate recommendation is that uh, they be treated with extreme caution and not to underestimate them as if they were merely individual superpower weirdos. They operate as a team, they operate with objectives, and they operate with an eye toward what the community will do afterward. So this kind of you know, pro wrestling thing of you guys fight these guys and see who wins really isn't what they're about. I'm not um, and, to pro wrestle myself. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, yeah, she so you know the the three of you are, are little known as superheroes and uh, corporate recommendation is that you exercise extreme caution. The possibility that Ghost is here is very strong, particularly our prediction that they would not be averse to 
visiting extreme destruction upon this site. as one means of handling the situation. ICE has provision in its secret guidelines that we've uncovered uh, that uh, scorched earth policy towards some of their detainment camps is preferable to exposure. What you're saying, Tina, is that this place is rigged to blow? It may not be quite that explicitly done, uh, as such, we don't know about any pr preparation of this kind, but Ghost in particular uh, would be, uh, is very, very good at plausible deniability for its employers. For those who outsource to Z, and when Z uses Ghost, plausible deniability to the employer is a top priority. And we already know that ICE has literally no use for the people in these detainment camps except for the profits and immediate political positioning of their, their command culture. Tina, the, the voice has been all there, that corporate voice that she uses has been in this case, and then it kind of switches a little bit the, the voice in the armor doesn't like change to Tina's because the voice is more still described, but but the intonations and the, the vocal presentation mm -hmm. is so different that you can totally tell when it's really her talking. And uh, and when, when she switches to it, she says, this, she says and nods, this is super villainy. <laughs> Says. what i'm trying to figure out is if i mean do we want to stay and just keep doing like panel by panel or just aggregate what we could learn from our various intelligence resources let's do that let's move into an intelligence resource situation um and uh oh and and uh myrmidon will will tell you that uh, her abilities are uh she says, uh, in, in Tina's way of speaking, she says, uh, my capabilities are, for better or worse, reminiscent of ghosts. I'm capable of significant direct action, but more importantly, of generating the right information blackout and information releases that optimize the messaging of whatever situation i'm in so straightforwardly tina does that mean that you can out ghost she says by myself i don't know with your help we have a good chance a great deal of my attention is going to be taken by controlling communications. Uh, it is shutting down communications that they want to make and releasing communications that they don't want released. Uh, right. So that, that will require some of my attention. Uh, All right my uh, uh, more physical capabilities can be treated as a uh, a backup, a surprise ally if necessary um, as right. long as we remain as long as we remain in the communication. Understood. Um, Just to be clear, priority one, is getting John. Yes? Priority one, according to corporate, is the messaging. Period. <laughs> Priority one is that this detainment camp be exposed and that any destruction to it be properly ascribed to uh, the willingness of its command structure 
to do so. That this matter be, very little of this will be directly believed or reported on in a straightforward fashion by the media in the United States, but we are skilled in uh, virality. That is priority one. I can live with that as long as you understand that my priority one is always going to be John. Right. The the, the Myrmidon doesn't move. It, it, she wouldn't shrug. There's no body language right. of that kind in the Myrmidon armor. So right. she she but, the, uh, right. Yeah. Am I on the right track here? Yeah. Ron? Yeah. Is this kind of a... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Somewhat. Yeah, I kind of like the idea that the face actually could be visible, but Sorry. but you can't see it well. So my... All right, look. No, so my thought... First off, I... I'm just going to be vpp and all over the place, so to speak. Uh... <laughs> I want to give myself some send telepathy. You know, just crank it all into telepathy, basically to establish a link with Brian. Okay. In the form of, so like these, I'll pull out these two golden scarabs that'll fly onto our foreheads and open their wing cases and start buzzing their wings. So I will send him, I will just think about John Wayland. So he will have a intimate knowledge of John Wayland. Excellent. Okay. He's, as far as I know, he's a nice guy. <laughs> um, I would also, uh, for my personal purposes, I would also like, while I'm in touch with Brian, I would like to ask Brian, can you show me what you experienced when you read Ruiz's mind? Sure, of course. Yeah, and that's where... That's when you get the flaming cross and yeah. all the... Yeah, strangely yeah. enough, it's quite familiar. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to establish... Oh, yeah, for that sure. Little, that right. little thing. Right. Um, that's what I'm going... That's where I'm going next is... Brian mind scans for both Wayland and... Brimstone, at the least. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't think... Maybe Scorpion, if we can... You know, I can give him my memories of Scorpion, so that would be helpful too. And then I turn on, turn the mirror on, uh, onto telescopic vision and X-ray vision. So I'll, I'll just double check if that combination is possible without any chicanery. Mm -hmm. I need to put telescopic vision on a cost endurance limitation in order to pull the sure. stuff. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, however, I uh, I'm going to say the mind scan goes first, correct? Because that's going to inform where you're going to be looking. Actually, a lot of these things are going to go have to go in sequence. The first one is the telescopic link. Uh, since both of you are opening your minds to this, I don't think that an attack roll is necessary. So what I want, however, is a uh, roll of your. It's 66, correct? Uh, for me, points. if I put everything in, yeah, it looks like if I put everything in the telepathy, that would be 66. Right. So, therefore, you would, if you want, you can drop your ego defense so that it won't interfere with this link. Yes, of course. I'm right. totally right. for right. the link. Okay. 25. Sorry. Uh, 25. It's a multiple of intelligence, and so, therefore, um, your intelligence is what, Santiago? 15. Right. So you're still only getting one times intelligence, but he's okay. concentrating on scorpion, or sorry, on brimstone. So it's actually yeah. extremely easy for for that. Um, and I'm going to say at the same time that the uh, the reverse is also true. You guys are both fully aware of your individual experiences with Ruiz, and I think that at this point, neither of you can tell which of you experienced which. Okay. Right. Um, gotcha. so, so uh, it's an interesting it's an interesting concept. If you wanted to, I could Crazy. permit uh, some detective work on your part to put like two and two together about him in some ways. Um, um, if I'll take it if you're giving it. Yeah. 
So go ahead and do okay. that. Seems like the right thing to do. Ross, tell me more about yeah. what you're doing and what you want. I'm feeling like uh, Finn is feeling a bit of a spare uh, wheel because mm -hmm. my intelligence gathering capabilities are not um, as pronounced as these two. I think Rod may have just. You have smelled Ruiz before. This is, I suppose, this is true. I did trail them to the church. So just um, keeping that in mind, you're not really close enough to do anything about that yes, yet. Exactly. But, but maybe. So, uh, so therefore, you made the detective work roll? Yeah. Right. And the detective work roll is going to reveal a couple of things. Um, Ruiz is uh, Mexican-born. Okay. Um, but he, one of his parents was a U.S. citizen, and he was in a gray area as to whether he would be a citizen or not. Okay. And then that was denied. Um, he served in the U.S. military under the, one of the provisions, and this is real world, that if you serve in the U.S. citizen as a Mexican applicant to uh, United States citizenship, that at the end of your hitch, you can be assessed for citizenship kind of de novo. Oh, and by the way, you are granted citizenship if you die. <laughs> well, that's, that's heartening. Right, but the point is, is that he uh, hit another technicality of some kind. Apparently, a number of people who do this are mysteriously denied the citizenship anyway under a number of whatever provisions. And so, um, the uh, then he was hired by Blackwater um, and gained citizenship through that service as a as a as a perk of that service. Um, he is deeply uh, committed to identity as an American citizen through military service. And as he sees it, the, uh, the, the ruthless and pragmatic service afforded by, as he sees it, necessary groups like Blackwater. He has no, and I mean no, compunction whatsoever about working for, for Z. He seems to have repurposed aspects of his Catholic upbringing into that mission. He sees them as identical. Um, and uh, is particularly dismissive of the humanity of those he considers not Americans. So in many ways, you guys were able to... Uh, you know, utilize this shared experience of him and use detective work as a sort of intuitive memory palace device right, right, right. for generating kind of a picture portrait of the guy. And yeah. especially the imagery that came through in those telepathic effects was, you know, this is somebody who, who tortures as a... As, as a holy mission. So, yeah, he's a little bent. It's interesting to think of him as a flip side of the coin to Michael in a way. Thing is... Nothing, nothing like meeting in a church. Yeah, 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 yeah. I Ultimately, I don't know if any kind of... Well, we'll just have to see how... It plays we'll out. just have to see. If things get Catholic between the two of you, then there's special effects galore. I'm not sure I'll actually but, have. Uh, not sure I'll actually have Armageddon happen, but Ross again. Um, yes. Tina attempts. I'll use the name or the one to indicate the way that she's talking. Mm -hmm. Tina says to you, uh, "Crawl." I think I see how, and then she gags again, and the corporate kicks in uh, and says, um, "Direct communication contraindicated." <laughs> I kind of slap her arm on the back and say, "Spit it out, love." We're <laughs> not love that, very much. right? Uh, come on, spit it out. Mm, the, the she she jerks once and then goes still and straight. Presence attack, crawl. Mm. Use your <laughs> yeah. use your rakish charm. Indeed. Um, 
Well, you did. Who was it? Who was it? Who actually spoke to her no, just yeah, right last time? It was Paul. Oh, yeah. you have established a bit of a yeah. Yeah. of a rapport. I think. Um, yeah, he was uh, the one. Brian did. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, okay. Uh, I mean, do you guys want to do that now? I, it was a little bit of color showing that that yeah. that she can't. That that her her uh, her override is very strong in regard to crawl. Um, yeah, that's not that was an yeah, go right ahead and sign up with um, with uh, Monsanto, Brian. You'll do fine. <laughs> I'm sure their contract with their superpowered representatives is at least as generous as Myrmidons. <laughs> Uh, what's what's the status? I'm sorry. Where, no, are we at I'm sorry. Of, where are we at in terms of what me and Brian are doing? Are yeah. we still? Yeah, you guys are busy. I figure all this is going on while you guys are okay. working things out because okay. you got to do the mind scan now. So, Brian, were you going to do that? Right. Yes. I'm not kidding. though. all I'm heard about. Great couple. Uh, one of those three. Shipping already. That's right. Sure, yeah, that's right. Chromadon. <laughs> <laughs> I got a twelve. Oh. oh okay. I'm supposed to be doing something important. <laughs> um. So yeah, twelve is actually a, a good attack roll, but the problem is that you're up against uh, an area of considerable people. Can What's my it? little golden beetle? pile in points to his mind scan? Is that a, is that a thing? That's an interesting that... thing. You could, if you okay. wanted to, uh, do mind scan usable on others. And, and just... when through and since telepathy is going, I'll allow it to be an add rather than just a parallel. Add the best way to do it would be to add dice to his ego. You could add five points to his oh, ego. Oh, there you go. Right. There you go. You could add five points to his ego and then his ECV goes up. Um, is five... So that's twenty. I mean, no, ten points. Mm -hmm. Right. That's exactly. That's exactly what I need to do. Ten points of ego. What's your ego on your sheet, um, Santiago? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. So ten points would make it thirty-one, Jesus. Oh. which would make an ECV of ten, which is quite nasty. So. Holy crap. Yeah. So yeah, you're basically you like you're basically like I can't find him. You know, I need to. I need. I'm not. I'm gonna have to do this in little sections, because you guys are right. doing. Yeah. You guys are are like doing the telepathy yeah. thing like and. Going and you're saying, you're saying I got to go by sections, right? And you're like, mind, no, man. yeah, that's right, no. Zzz, <laughs> turn up the beetle, <laughs> turn up the beetle, rotate it. Zzz, zzz, right? You're like a little knob, right? <laughs> Does it go to eleven? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, it, but it goes to thirty-one. Ten. Ten. Not the best roll in this in this particular context, but. It could be a lot thousand, worse. Thousand people yeah. Be able. You would be able to tell that where Ruiz is. Ruiz is here, and he's located in the northwest corner. The northwest corner is a set of buildings that are not the primary place that obviously houses most of the prisoners. Um, and it has several small buildings which look like uh, dwelling places. Like kind of what the way they call Quonset huts in English, the the very quick, quick buildings, buildings that like come in a truck and you just put them up in a day. Now, I want to describe a little bit more about the compound that you're facing. A lot of it is fairly stereotypical. There is a perimeter. Uh, the perimeter is fenced. Um, more importantly, inside the perimeter is an area which is subject to scrutiny. Um, it's clearly uh, monitored. There's sort of your typical security camera situation. There's very clearly designated strip of drivable territory all around the perimeter inside a wider zone. So there's fence, then an internal zone, and inside that is a drivable strip. There is no evidence whatsoever of anybody getting out or in off that drivable strip. Ron, are you thinking I, of those uh, uh, sort of semi-cylindrical? Yeah, things? I am. As a matter of fact, uh, that's yeah, the layout. That's the layout that we're talking about 
a little bit nicer than just your straight up metal skeleton, but yeah. not too much nicer. Yeah. Other buildings are far more boxy and warehouse like, except for like watchtower type things. All right. Um, there is a yard, much like a prison yard, um, and there's also a sort of disturbing set of corridors built with a uh, wire fence, which are the only ways oh, I... that the detainees can actually go from place to place is through yeah. these open air corridors of wi corridors of wire fence. That perimeter strip, uh, Ross, did you make that intelligence roll? Um, sorry, I'm making sense wrong. I've been distracted by the people concert hut. Um, I got a nine. So yeah, okay, I'm excellent. Uh, you immediately recognize that that is a killing ground. That anybody who goes on to uh, right. that zone is uh, is a target. Fired on. And right. um, it is it's it's absolutely lethal. You cannot penetrate it. It's one of the reasons why the Berlin Wall was never all that high. So, yes, uh, in a very, very low-tech and inexpensive way, they have replicated the Berlin Wall as their perimeter device. So, I'm still in the telepathic bond with Michael, right? We are losing so far, the so good. device? Yeah. If I do the... Okay, if I do the telescopic plus x-ray thing... Well, I'm working on it. The idea is there's a lot of ground to cover, so if he mind scans to get a location where a lot better off in terms of nailing it. Okay. So, uh, reach out with your mind and try to find John. All right. All right, so you guys are burning, actually, you're burning, I, I want to point out, you guys are burning a fair amount of endurance, and you're all in the same round at the moment. It's time for you guys, actually, to calculate endurance. I made the link at six dice, so that's... Right, you made the link at six dice, so that's going to be uh, six points right there. And then um, also, you boosted his uh, right, the, the ego, six more. right? Six more. Right, and then also, uh, anything else? That's it so far okay. for right. me. Yes. Now, Brian, you have uh, two times endurance on that uh, mind scan. All right. Yes. So it's so at thirty 12. points. Yeah, it's at thirty points, and so it's going to be twelve points of endurance to use. So you've okay. already used twelve points of endurance. Pretty intense. Right. And right. if you're going to run another mind scan on Wayland, um, then uh, you're going to. This is a, another round of the same endurance expenditure for both of you, because you've got to do the to, the telepathy okay. as a Are new pulse of information. Are we doing this? What am I trying to say? Are we doing this round recover, round recover, or are no, we in no. second, we're in phases? Okay, we're in phases we're, right now. We're in phases. Okay, right. Um, and, I'm, and I have a very distinct reason for doing this. Yeah, I'll bet you do. Okay. Um, so spend all the endurance again that you just spent, which would be, I believe, six and twelve. And so right. you've spent twenty-four endurance. Yeah. Yes. For Santiago. You have 16 endurance remaining to you at this time. Crawl, what are you doing? Are you waiting? I guess maybe I am... Um, Perimeter watching... scan, Crawl. That's my speech balloon. Mm -hmm. I was going to say I was going to uh, be watching the road up to the truck stop to see if there yeah. were vehicles coming and going to be going to the... or coming from the um, uh, encampment uh, slash prison camp slash gulag. Um I wouldn't say it's constant, but there's no reason why there wouldn't be a you know a vehicle or two in, mm -hmm. you know. You might have timed it and said wait until you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sure. Uh, and, um, how are you getting then, up there? What's your plan exactly? Um, well, I, I was thinking of sort of view from the top of the building in the truck stop, but if that's not uh, practical, wait, I'm happy to wait, what's wander that? off into the, the scrubland a little bit further away. I'm not intending no. to go particularly close. Wait a minute. Hold on. We kind of need you to use your... We need you to use your extraordinary senses to prevent us from being surprised if anyone finds Okay, us. I'm happy to do that if you would prefer. 
I'd keep my eyes peeled in that I, case. I see that looking, Ronzai. This seems like a good idea. Okay, I've, I've, never I've, found, I, I've, I've always found it far more entertaining not to poker face GM. Because it's yeah. all the more fun for you guys to see it coming on my face and not be able to do anything about it. So, the, um, yeah. Um, I'm going to roll something for Ramadan. And I'm also going to uh, start checking a couple of other characters' actions yeah. and activities. Ramadan says. Uh, I'm going into communications mode, mm -hmm. um, and therefore uh, may seem uh, inaccessible. Uh, so or inaccessible than normal. Okay. Uh, and at which point she'll actually go down on one knee and okay. put her arms in in such a way that basically she's an armored lump. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Satellite dish or something. So, yes. A war of communications begins. Okay. <laughs> so, you know where Ruiz is, but you, now you have to scan for Wayland. Make your attack roll. Ten. You roll a lot of tens. So, um, yeah. we have, in that case, much easier this, this time. Very yeah, he is. you're you're up against a lot less defense than uh, than Wayland. So, or sorry, than Brimstone. So, uh, you find actually that he it, it, it's the precisely the same location. Yes, I'm afraid of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that can be good. Mm -hmm. I'm, so I'm going to use whatever the next phase I have available is to switch to my vision capabilities. Um, and I have to use three endurance on that because I have to put cost endurance on the uh, on the telescopic. Yes. And uh, and uh, so half phase to switch, and then half mm -hmm. phase to try to zoom in on the location he gives me as right. exactly as possible and see okay. what is going on in there. Excellent. Okay. And so this and is would be my, this is the mirror. Are you right. using, like, the mirror? I am using the mirror. Right. Okay, so, Ross. Danger sense yes. roll. And this is kind of important. And I just made it. I got Ooh, a 10. Excellent. All right. All right. Um, you have, uh, at this point, uh, you're suddenly acutely aware. Uh, I'm going to say that the, the, the taste of the air. By the way, have you kind of crawled out at this point? Have you like gone all um, crawly? I would, I would hope so. Um, I hadn't, but I'm, I'm on the basis that I, we were kind of kicking heels on top of the roof. But I'm, uh, I feel as soon as the environment and the air starts feeling unnatural and nasty and dangerous, I would definitely turn them to crawl. Mm -hmm. The nature of the danger. Uh, is, I believe, not very easily analyzed using danger sense itself. I believe mm -hmm. it is merely an impending sense of doom that is experienced. Um, but there is some, there has to be some information involved. It, it's the, well, no, it's the building beneath you. Uh, the building that you actually are on um, is, uh, you, you realize... It, it, perhaps it's intuitive, you know. Perhaps you smell something about it that isn't right for what it is, um, which probably would involve a certain amount of fuel or explosive material. If you realize right, it doesn't smell right. Letting NPCs pick the buildings we lurk on. That's right. <laughs> and you, uh, it, and you, it clearly was. You, you realize that this whole that this truck stop is a dummy, yeah. or at least maybe it functions as a truck stop, but some of it does not. Um, and that it is, uh, that, that if that's the case, then there may well have been alarms or some other triggering device involved. Okay. Uh, Michael, this place is wrong and bad and we need to get out of it now. I understand, but I have to do this one thing 
and then we decamp. Combat round or combat phase twelve. All right. Highest dexterity. I believe that goes to crawl. Uh, I've got twenty-one. So mm-hmm. Michael has eighteen, I believe, or twenty. Twenty-one now. I spent nine experience. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you guys are both at twenty-one. <laughs> All right, then. Well, uh, in that case, I believe we have what might be considered a clash of cultures. Or Wait, uh, Brian, you have 23. Is that correct? Your, tw- your dexterity? No, it's, it's 20. 20. Okay, so we have a roll-off between uh, those two characters. Uh, given what you just said, uh, Myrmidon uh, actually uh, armors up in a very weird way. Actually, the armor encloses further and what appears to be a strange armored sphere actually floats away from Myrmidon a little bit. Oh, sweet. Right. And, but you're kind of like, well, if this place blows up, nothing's happening to her. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of right. pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. So, um, cool. And now powers that I built several weeks ago are actually being used in play. I She's a, she's a she's a tricky she's a tricky character. So um, let's uh, let's go ahead and see uh, who's going to go first. Now roll a single die, each of you. Okay. Yeah. Now it's in the hands of the gods. All right. A one. A one. Ross. Four. Well. What does Crawl do? Grab me in your tentacle and take me out of here. That is the plan. No. Grab, okay. Um, Oblate and leap off the building. Excellent. Assuming so, the leaps don't take an entire phase. Mm-hmm. So therefore, two two endurance for ten points of strength to grab him. Yes. Um, and also, uh, I'm going to call another endurance for stretching. One, okay. you know, because yeah, just because you have to reach a little bit, right? Just one X. Yeah. Um, and then uh, eight points for the jump. So uh, uh, wow, my my strength is now plus five. That could be nine points of jump because I grew and I'm now. Oh, that's right. Yes, it's nine points for the jump. Yeah, crawls big. Oh, that's right. He's how how big is he? Uh, it's it's he only a it's one it's, level of growth. A bit yeah, it's one level of growth, which is that. not. Uh, you're still technically a one hex creature. Okay. So <laughs> so kind of like thing big, bigger it's than a life. person, but not gigantic. Even as crawl is like jumping with you, you're like this. You're like looking in the mirror, right? Yeah. You know, you're like. Yeah, so um, right. the so good. Uh, he's right. Yeah, so, tel- yeah, so right. telescopic X-ray. Right. And I so. want to see exactly what situation. You know, I'm trying to see exactly what situation he is in. Where is Brimstone in relation to him? So I can. Got it. Be thinking about you need to him. you will, yes, and so you need to make a perception check. All right, and all my points are in just doing this. So all right, I'm so it's regular perception. Thirteen. Yeah, thirteen. That's not so that is a nine, so I'm, right. I'm under, under. Excellent. So that's actually very amusing that you're able to keep your head and sort of orient as to where everything is, yeah. right, as you're going through all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, and what I kind of like, the mirror stays exactly level. Right. right. Just right. goes along right. exactly yeah, level. Just, right. And yeah. I'm just like doing it like this. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what happens is that you're able to see something very important, which okay. is that Wayland is under pursuit at the moment. Uh, or rather, under there's a there's a manhunt on for him. He is holding an extremely injured and wretched looking person, um, and is is supporting them, and is attempting to make his way through that Quonset area. Holy crap! And that uh, and and is looking like harried and 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 you know exhausted and desperate. So yes, that's what's going on. As far as where Brimstone is, you're actually having a much harder time understanding where he is. He's got some ego defense going for him. That's all I got to say, and other things yeah, yeah. too that that are not are not going to help in your attempts to locate him precisely. So uh, I um, understood. Um, so they so are not know. under a roof. They are in the open. How do you say in the open? Uh, right now, they are just—they've just ducked into one of the Quonset huts. All right. So I'm gonna keep that location fixed in my mind uh, right. while we're 
I I grab Myr Myrmidon and fly out of there. Myrmidon, you get a grip on Myrmidon? She's really, 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 really heavy. Oh. There is no way you can fly. You're like, you can't even, like, you're like. I, th I think she's going to pick. Don't forget about her little, her little ball that yeah. popped out of the. I, I have a All feeling right, then that I that's fly. Like then I fly straight God up. God only knows what's going on. Right. Like, a lot. Right. Exactly. So you you attempt to gr you grab, realize what you're up against, let go and fly. This is a, this is uh, allowed. Uh, you're going to uh, you're cutting it very close, um, and crawl got out of there a lot quicker than you did, and so especially with that little delay. So I'm going to um, I'm going to basically say yeah you're going to have to burn some endurance to get to get out of the blast radius. Okay, Santiago, what I'm trying to say is do you or don't you want to maximize your speed? This is a significant uh, decision on your part. You just tell me. Oh, are you yes, burning as much speed as you can? Okay. Your endurance yes, is course. your endurance is down to 1. Yes. Right. Right about now your character is thinking I don't know if I can keep this up. Um, and your communication is somewhat broken. Yeah, you guys can't see Brian. He went, he's disappeared into the night. Um, and, clear. right, and so Crawl and Oblate are in a manly embrace on yeah. the scrubby prairie floor. Um, You're within, a yeah, with, with, <laughs> he's like, listen to me next time. You know? <laughs> no, I just have to. Yeah. Arr, <laughs> so um let's take it to uh, john is in extreme danger we've got to get in there mm -hmm. can you carry me <laughs> okay have you got a plan for that Jesus that's crazy um getting in does not look like a cake okay so ron yeah tunneling <laughs> Yep. Has the option to <laughs> leave the tunnel behind you or not leave the tunnel behind you. That's one thing. Now, I can get quite a bit of tunneling, I think. Beach boy, crawl. Yeah. Anubis can guide me under the earth to where John is. But we need a way to meet up back outside the perimeter. Or I could come with you. Good thinking. Watch your back. It seems like you need it. You're right about that. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the plan. I need to... Can you carry me to the, an insertion point? Carry me to a suitable insertion point so I can rest up a little, and then I'll go that in. Fine. That... What I'm saying, Rock, can I be using my phases to recover while he's piggybacking me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's... Okay. That's what I need to know. So the oblate is, is, I imagine, now cradled within tentacularly. Within yes, yes, a, yes. A delight. This I, I, I like the fact that you guys all like carry each other. Sometimes you like, you know, use him. You know, use yeah. your power yeah. to put crawl places, and other times crawl like grabs you and like pour, yeah. jumps places. And so everybody's like, and and sooner or later somebody's going to get flown somewhere if you haven't already. Yeah, yes. Next question, then, while you guys are doing that and uh, and, and leaping about the landscape. Um, well, I think this is more crawly, tentatively scurrying across the landscape. Stealth roll. Um, so then, um, Santiago, Brian, make a perception yes. roll. So I rolled a 14. So uh, this is 12, and I rolled a 14. So I guess it's uh, bad news. Uh, you are having a little trouble spotting your friends. They seem to have moved. The thing exploded over there, and then they went somewhere. And you're looking around the landscape, and it's really far down, and it's a little hard to see them. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking a, a couple of panels to just right, 
rest right. and go over what happened. Like I'm, I'm floating amongst the clouds, like, right, like you do right. when you're in, in mm -hmm. the sea. Like, let me inform you that if you do anything, yeah, you cannot take a recovery. Floating up there on the clouds will still cost you one point of endurance, and it counts as an action, a right. movement action. So therefore, you will not be able to add recovery. The only way you'll get oh. a recovery is if you land on the ground. Is if you land on the ground. All right, I will do that. I will come back to the ground. Um, mm -hmm. but can we can we do the special effect like I'm I let myself drop, mm -hmm. and that's where I recover the points. And in the last moment, I I stop and. Oop, and yeah, actually, and that's that's kind of yeah, that's that's a nice that yeah, that's fine. I, it, it sounds right. great, actually. I like that. Oh, free! So you just basically go into free fall. To to Brian, yes. to Brian, free fall is just another way to get around. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like that. He's really at home up there. Other people, you know, jump over a fence. He just goes into free fall to take a break, and then pulls out of it and puts his feet on the ground. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. Right. Um, okay, so good. Uh, but anyway, you still, though, you're out there in the middle of the prairie, there's this exploding thing behind you, and you know damn well that you're on very questionable territory. When you take, you're taking your recovery and kind of like, right, and then this sphere comes zipping along and circles you rapidly and then comes to a dead stop right next to you. Very Star Wars. Right, right, and uh, and and the the you recognize it. It's the same kind of armoring that that Myrmidon had. It's got enough kind of grooves in it, kind of like a basketball, so that it doesn't look just like a shiny sphere. Um, and uh, of course, what am I thinking? It's got the Myrmidon logo. Yeah, yeah, yes. Of course, yeah. And so uh, the. And and so it just stops right there next to you. Um, it doesn't seem to do anything. So if you're kind Am of I looking, any, yeah, if you're just kind of looking at like what the me? hell, um, actually you're not getting thoughts from it. It is not a thinking thing. That's actually sort of interesting. Right. Either you're either it's not working or this thing doesn't think. So I, I tell the the flying ball, <laughs> so, so, what are you up to? <laughs> Yeah, excellent. What's your deal? So it will travel over to where um, Crawl and the Oblate are. Oh, I see. So. And so it just kind of like floats away fairly rapidly, and it will, and the, the question is whether you follow it or not. It's a, yes, I, I follow it. Yeah, right. it's, so it's it's like like Lassie, you know, team is down the wall. That's, yeah, that's right. kind of that's, that's what I'm saying. It's kind of ridiculous, except that I built it to do stuff like this. <laughs> so so um, I I follow it, but I pretend to be. Uh, no, I I run after it. I don't okay. see him flying. So okay, I run good after it. Okay, as fast as I can. If I can do a little, I don't know, a right. cheating. Right. Oh, yeah. You run pretty fast, right? Because yeah. right. So, uh, so you will get to where the other two are. Is that? Are we seeing that thing swoop by? That's us? right. Yeah, you're gonna. It, 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 right. It goes around once, and then it sort of spots you, and then zips straight to you, and okay. then and then here comes. All right. The. I'll say, well, crawl. So far, it seems like Mermanon's contribution was finding a bomb for us to stand on, and then giving away our position. So. Maybe we should stick to the amateurs. Uh, Hi guys, nice to see you made it out. Yes, sorry I couldn't uh, grab you as well. Uh, oh, never fun. mind. I I I, I fly, so right. it's all right. I tried to grab Mirmidon, but she was like, like uh, hooked to that thing. She was it was impossible to to lift her. She was so heavy. Well, you missed the conversation, but uh, Anubis is going to guide us to John, so uh, roll with the punches. <laughs> we are declaring so war government. government. You realize that, don't you? Oh, <laughs> wait, you, who, do you, who did you address that to? Brian. Oh, to Brian. Oh, okay, yes. So. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. So, all right. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, and strangely so enough, Paul doesn't really look like that bothers him a whole lot at this point. <laughs> okay. Uh, in weird little voice in Brian's head, just for fun, Matt would approve. 